Chris. You're going to prove to be a very hard act to follow, but uh, I, will, I will try and, and mumble my way through. Uh, my name is Aidan McCoy. I work with uh, Fisher Engineering up in Fermanagh. Uh, we are the structural steel work fabricator working with BAM on the Leeds Arena. Fisher Engineering is based in, in Ballin Mallard in County Fermanagh, just outside Inniskillen. The company was started in 1950 by the late Tommy Fisher, a blacksmith shop in the main street of a, a very rural village uh, servicing the local agricultural community. Uh, today we have two, 280 employees and a tonnage output of approximately 500 tonne per week. We have a, a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility that, that is, is pictured here and including you know, our own uh, fabrication shops and paint shops which is not quite unique, but it is. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, there's very few have a lot of fabricators would send their steelwork out for painting. We specialise in a, a, a number of key areas. Uh, we do heavy structural steel. We do complex structures. We do multi stories. We do portal frames right down as far as uh, metal work, and rails and stairs, if necessary, if, if, if clients demand. We have a very strong client base both in Ireland and the UK. And uh, we have a significant amount of repeat orders, and with the likes of BAM being uh, one of our key clients in the UK. Fisher's, all of our structural steelwork is, is modelled in 3D. Nothing is, is done on the board anymore, as they say. No 2D AutoCAD, everything is, is modelled in, in 3D. And we have been using 3D modelling now for well over in, in excess of, of 20 years. Fisher Engineering uh, in 2007 joined the Saraville Rowan group of companies uh, based in, in, in Yorkshire. Uh, as being part of a, of a larger group, uh, we can call on, on the expertise across the group. And at the same time, we have been lucky enough that we have been able to maintain our, our autonomy from the point of view of uh, our day-to-day -day operations. We also uh, share workload uh, as and where necessary, both to and from in, in, in two directions that we win our own jobs the other members of the group win their jobs and we can swap uh, workload as the various factories uh, require together as a group uh, we will have a, a capacity of approximately 2400 tons a week some of our previous projects just to give you an idea of, of what we do um, I've listed here some of the ones in Ireland and a small selection of, of the recent ones. Uh, Dundrum Shopping Centre, our town centre, uh, as no doubt uh, you will all be aware of. That for us was a massive project and uh, there's 24,000 tonne of structure steel in that job. Uh, another one that we're, we're very proud of is the, is the Convention Centre in Dublin. This was a 7,500 tonne job and on this project uh, we also worked very closely with, with Crea Concrete in uh, the, the terrace seating units uh, in, in the auditorium, the 2000 seater auditorium. On this particular project, the concrete was detailed in two dimensional rather than three dimensional. And the, the different approach and the different outcomes from this project to the Leeds Arena uh, was, was significant. Uh, and that's a 2000 seater arena the amount of work that went into that in, in coordinating steel and the concrete versus the amount of work that went into a 12,000 seater arena uh, in Leeds together with uh, the uh, wall panels on the, on the Leeds arena which is uh, anything but simple. Uh, the labour input of the man hours required to coordinate the two trades was uh, the, the difference was, was significant. Another one of our projects is the Point Village and uh, that again was, was, was a multi-storey building of, of uh, multiple use and that, that equated to 15,000 tonnes. Monte Vetro in the, in the centre of Dublin is, is another one of ours, uh, 2,300 tonne, 15 storeys and that is now uh, the, uh, the Google building, we completed that in 2011. And finally for now, 
the uh, Titanic building in Belfast is, is one that we have just finished there last year. This building uh, has a, a unique geometry, as you can see from the outside. Uh, there were, that, that building had columns leaning at 25 degrees, and that was by design, not construction tolerance. Um, but the geometry was the key driver in this job. You can see there, there is a significant, there just, we just struggled. We struggled to find two beams that were parallel in the entire job. So this, again, this job was all modelled in, in, in 3D, and it was the only way that we stood any chance of, of piecing it together. Some of our current projects, uh, we are working with, with John Sisk at the moment in, in the UK, uh, and I said, unfortunately all of our current projects are in the UK, which is uh, our refla the reflection of, of the current uh, economic climate here in Ireland. Th this job is a, is, a, is a waste to energy facility in, 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 Mid in Middlesbrough, which we are, we are doing with, with John Sisk. And this uh, it creates till 1,500 tonnes of steel for ourselves. We are also getting uh, at the early stages of a project in Gatwick Airport, where we are adding some uh, additional walkways to, to Pier 5. This, this job is, is just at the detailing stages and will be going into manufacture next month and on to site uh, in August. We are also fortunate enough that we are involved uh, in uh, Terminal 3 in Heathrow. Uh, and again, this is a 6,800 tonne job and this is currently underway. And another waste facility, again with, with CISC uh, in, in Liverpool, the, run, the Runcorn uh, Waste to Energy, and that is a 5,500 tonne job for themselves. Now, back to, to the main subject Leeds Arena. For us, Leeds Arena is a 4,200 tonne structural steel project. There is over 20,000 erectable parts. Um, I noticed your earlier comment, Chris, so we must be nearly finished now. Because uh, you have about 20,000 pieces built. So uh, we have about 20,000 bits of steel in the job, so we must be nearly there. Um, that, that steel is held together well, well in excess of 100,000 bolts and every bolt has to fit perfectly into every hole, so uh, there's a lot of coordination and thinking required. The roof on Leeds Arena uh, is made up of a series of long span trusses, uh, spanning up to 70 metres, and the, the biggest or the heaviest truss weighs 170 tonne. As, as I said before, uh, this, the structure was entirely modelled in, uh, in 3D. The software that we use is, is tackless structures, and I've included uh, some, just as, as I talk through here, I've included some uh, snapshots from the models and some photographs of what we actually built to try and illustrate the, the, the level of detail that, that the, the model goes into, but also the expanse of the detail of, of the model, as to, you know, the, the sheer size of the job. On, on Leeds Arena, uh, we took the engineer's 3D model and used that to develop our Tacla steel model, or manufacturing model as Chris would call it. Uh, this would not be the norm. Uh, normally speaking we would take 2D drawings and develop the, the, the drawings, from, develop the model from scratch. But because of the complexity of this job, the programme of the job, and also being brutally honest about it, the confidence level in the engineer's model, it was agreed that, that we would go ahead on the basis of the model rather than on the basis of 2D drawings. The engineer, the engineer, he would have exported the information onto an IFC file from his Revit model, which we then in, in, incorporated into, into the TACLA model. The architect's model was also used to, to set out certain steel elements because it was just impossible uh, to set them out on 2D drawings. They were sloping in two directions, they were uh, there were, there were twists in them, so it was just impossible. So we were using the ar architect's information, and that information was coming in as, as 3D DWG drawings, if I can get it out, and that again was imported into the tactical model. The, uh, every, every two weeks, 
we uh, would have we would export our model and send it to BAM for them to import into, into Navis Works to do a, 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 a class check. As well as that, that link with BAM, we also uh, worked directly or with with uh, Crea Concrete in that we swapped tackle models between the two companies to do for the purpose of, of coordinating the, the precast concrete and, and the structure of steel and picking up the relevant support points and, and, and the likes. You know, as you can see there, there's, there's quite a, a significant amount of, of terrace seating and what is, is less clear from that, that image is the all of the, the perimeter walls were, were, uh, were made up of, of precast concrete panels bolted to the structure of steel and the, the, uh, the structure was anything Far, it was far away from uh, straight lines and right angles. The, uh, as once we said, so we would give our model uh, to BAM and they would uh, take it into Navis Works. And then on a, on a weekly basis, there was a, coordin a BIM coordination and clash detection meeting held, on which, which BAM chaired. All these meetings, as Chris has alluded to, were, were, were took place on Webex, which was a, a great benefit for the likes of ourselves from a travelling point of view. And th these meetings proved to be invaluable in, in terms of, of clash detection and uh, coordination and, and, and trying to, uh, trying to uh, solve problems before they happened. On Leeds Arena, I, I don't know if I'm uh, going to uh, contradict what, what Chris has said on Leeds Arena. We so far between the steel and the concrete, we're going to put our hands up and admit to two clashes. Uh, so we are, and they were very, very minor issues on site, and they were easily resolved. And when you take a look at that picture there, and you see the expanse of steelwork and precast concrete and a variety of other services, how we ever managed to get to get it to that level is completely unheard of in, in our industry and the reason for that is can only be put down to the coordination uh, of the, the BIM model. As, as well as the, the terrace seating that you see there, there is also uh, holocore, precast holo concrete holocore panels uh, on the horizontal floors uh, underneath that. The, the, those floors were, were, were modelled, were not modelled, they were detailed in 2D in the, in the traditional manner and there were a number of issues uh, with those. Not nothing major, uh, but just there, there were sort of the, the, some areas of very tight coordination There had to be some tweaking done on site. But the difference between a plain simple horizontal floor and terrace seating or uh, detailed wall panels, it's still the terrace seating went better than, than the, the, the horizontal floors. Finally, we, uh, the 3D modelling was also used to, to aid with, with the, the planning of, of the construction phase. Uh, an, an example of this is the, uh, the erection of the proscenium truss, proscenium arch truss uh, on, on Leeds Arena. The truss had a, was a 50 more meters, 54 metre span over the top of the, uh, the, the stage opening. The truss was 10.5 metres deep and weighed in at 170 tonnes. We used two 500 tonne cranes to lift this up into position in, in a tandem lift. The truss was lifted into position in one hour, um, but it took a further 72 hours of, of continuous steel erection to get sufficient steel added into, this, uh, into and around the truss to, to leave it stable and that we could then let off the cranes. So the cranes lifted it up and held it there for 72 hours before it could be released. Forward planning, as Chris has alluded to, was essential for that. We started planning that lift uh, during our tendering process. So 18 months before the, the truss was lifted into position, we were planning how to do it. In the end, that's, that's how we planned to do it. In the end, the truss was erected to within two millimetres. Yes, two millimetres as to where it should be. 
some architects in the room may complain about that statistic. Um, but I myself am very proud of that statistic. Uh, whether or not that was good planning or good luck, uh, I refrain from comment. Uh, I would like to think it's a little bit of both because there, there are trusses that, that are not just quite into two millimetres, maybe three. So that is, uh, that's how we plan to do it. That's how we did do it 18 months later. And hopefully you'll agree with me when I say that we planned what we'd do and we did what we planned. And in the end, we even managed to almost get the right colour of crane for the job. So that concludes my presentation this morning and uh, thank you for your attention.